Welcome back to BeYoungMinistry.com to another blog and to another podcast. Welcome to those who access the podcast through Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Rumble, and Spotify. Today we continue in our study of the book of Genesis. We're in chapter 21, verses 28 through 34, which reads, And Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock by themselves. Then Abimelech asked Abraham, What is the meaning of these seven ewe lambs which you have set by themselves? And he said, You will take these seven ewe lambs from my hand, that they may be my witness that I have dug this well. Therefore he called that place Beersheba, because the two of them swore an oath there. Thus they made a covenant at Beersheba. So Abimelech rose with Phicol, the commander of his army, and they returned to the land of the Philistines. Then Abraham planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba, and there called on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And Abraham stayed in the land of the Philistines many days. That's Genesis chapter 21, verses 28 through 34. Today we complete our study of Genesis chapter 21, where Abraham has entered into a covenant reflecting the golden rule with Abimelech, the king of Gerar. In our last study, we learned that Abraham gave to Abimelech sheep and oxen that were to be slain in the covenant-making ceremony just like we saw in Genesis chapter 15, when Abraham laid the parts of the animals side by side and God walked between the pieces. In today's passage, Abraham presented seven new lambs to Abimelech. In verses 28 and 29 of today's passage, we read, And Abraham set seven new lambs of the flock by themselves. Then Abimelech asked Abraham, What is the meaning of these seven ewe lambs which you have set by themselves? Abimelech was watching the unfolding story of Abraham and the God of the Bible for some time now from afar. He knew that God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, and thus he had a healthy respect for him. He also had a healthy respect for Abraham, who had earlier moved his tents from Gerar down to Beersheba, which was about 25 miles to the southeast. It also appears that Abimelech exercised control over that vast area south of Gerar. All of this explains the need for them to establish a covenant to coexist peacefully with one another. And even though it was obvious to Abimelech that God was with Abraham and he blessed him immensely, Abraham had a problem with being deceptive. This explains why Abimelech pressed Abraham as he did. In the previous verses, Abraham had given to King Abimelech sheep and oxen. Now he gives him seven new lambs, which were for confirming Abimelech's acknowledgement that the well in Beersheba belonged to Abraham. In other words, those lambs were a goodwill gift designed to witness Abimelech's agreement. In Genesis 15, we saw that God's deposit of guarantee was himself. It was God himself in the form of the smoking oven and the flaming torch who passed between the pieces, indicating that he was promising by himself his faithfulness to the promise. In Hebrews chapter 6, we are informed that God confirms his promise with an oath because he could swear by no one greater than himself. And the sign of the covenant that God gave to Abraham was circumcision, the reminder that he was and would always be committed to him. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14, the Apostle Paul reminds us that God has given us a deposit on his promise, the promise of the Holy Spirit, 
who indwells every believer and seals us in the faith. In all these ways, God confirms his promises to us in the covenant by himself, by his word, and by his spirit. God's covenant is given to establish security and stability in the relationship which we now have with him, even as this covenant between Abimelech and Abraham was designed to establish security and stability in their relationship. In verses 30 and 31 of today's passage, we read, And he said, You will take these seven new lamps from my hand, that they may be my witness that I have dug this well. Therefore, he called that place Beersheba, because the two of them swore an oath there. This well referenced here, I am told, is to this day still there, proof that this story really happened. The seven ewe lambs were offered by Abraham as proof that he dug this well. They implicitly state that the land around the well was for his use. The Hebrew noun beer means well. The Hebrew verb sheba means oath. Adding to this is the fact that the root of the verb sheba also means seven. You'll remember that seven is the number for perfection in the Bible. So, the result is the well of the seven. To this day, the well and the surrounding area is called Beersheba, and the name came from this oath. The evidence that it happened and was confirmed and held up were these seven new lambs, which were yet again pictures of the perfect Lamb of God, who would come to ratify the covenant that God chose to make with anyone willing to enter into a covenant relationship with him. In verses 32 through 34 of today's passage, we read, Thus they made a covenant at Beersheba. So Abimelech rose with Phicol, the commander of his army, and they returned to the land of the Philistines. Thus they made a covenant at Beersheba. So Abimelech rose with Phicol, the commander of his army, and they returned to the land of the Philistines. Then Abraham planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba, and there called on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And Abraham stayed in the land of the Philistines many days. The fact that the name of this place has lasted for 4,000 years tells us that God is carefully watching over his land and is demonstrating the significance of these accounts in his word. Abraham planted a tamarisk tree there at Beersheba as a means of worship to the covenant-keeping God of the Bible. The greatest covenant ever established was ratified upon a tree on the hill of Golgotha some 2,000 years ago. It was on that tree that the Lord Jesus Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through the Lord Jesus Christ, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Holy Spirit of God. My friends, I trust this blog and this podcast are helping you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.